Hi folks, just a quick video here. We're going to be talking about mass resolution, or in other words, why is it that some mass spectrometers record a spectrum that has broad peaks and others show up really sharp? Now you might notice in textbooks or online that some of the mass spectra have that width to them like that, right? Um, but other ones show up like these infinitely thin sticks. So we just call these profile spectra or bar spectra. Now I should mention that a bar spectrum is more of a representation because that's not in any way possible for a mass spectrum to be recorded that way. Peaks will always have width, but it's up to you to decide whether you're going to plot that width. But there are explanations that talk about why the peaks have width in the first place. So I kind of want to mention them very quickly here. So let's check out this peak right here. Now, it's drawn as if it's this nice smooth line, but we do have to think that there's actually data behind that. So all mass spectra are recorded by a computer, and a computer has a limit to how fast it can process the data. So if we process the data kind of slowly, in other words, you're collecting so many data points, then you might skew the, the width of that peak. It might not even show exactly where the center is. But the more data points that you have, the better you will have at showing up the true look of what that peak should be. Now, is this a problem today? Well, honestly, it isn't. I mean, the, the speed of processors today, it, it's always going to be fast enough to be able to, to keep up with how fast a mass spectrometer needs to work. Back in the 60s, the 50s, when we had old mass spec, well, sure, that was a limitation. But now this isn't even an issue. So why do peaks have width? Well, it all comes down to a, I guess, law of nature. The fact that every time you make a measurement, there will be error. And in this case, the measurement that we're dealing with is to record usually the motion of an ion, but there will be some uncertainty associated with that. In fact, this goes into a lot of stuff that we're going to be talking about later on in this course. The fact that you really can't push all these ions together into one tiny little packet. So let's just say for now that it's like it's a law of the universe that mass spectra are going to have peak width. Just be patient. Like I told you before, this course makes sense after you finish it all, but this is something that I can't explain just yet until we talk about how the instruments actually work. So this kind of goes along with one of my little quotes, even science is not an exact science. So if you can just accept the fact that peaks do have width, Here's something that I do want you to know right now, and which is a way of quantifying what the resolution is. So you don't want to just say they're really sharp or not sharp. In fact, we do that. So mass spectrometry is being defined as high resolution or low resolution, but you know those are kind of qualitative terms. I would say that the spectrum you're looking at right here, this is a low resolution mass spectrum. The peaks are very broad, but it's still arbitrary. So let's put a strict definition on it, a way of quantifying this with a number. So the first one is this 10% valley definition. And I'll be honest, I don't even like this definition. Um, very few people use this term when quantifying resolution. I mean, there's the equation, but the situation depends on the fact that we have this overlap between the two adjacent peaks. And technically speaking, the two peaks should actually be separated by one mass unit. You see that they're separated by two over here. So this doesn't even really apply. But what you would need to do is you would find the case where they exactly line up at 10%. Good luck with that. And then you just go plug it through this equation. But you know you can do a calculation like that. So instead, this is the one that most people use when reporting resolution. So it's called the full width at half maximum. So the resolution is just the mass divided by that peak width at half max. So you look at your mass, this one's 152, and you find the peak height, divide that number by two, so the height is 80, halfway down is 40, and then you cross that peak at this point. So it's the peak width right there. So you could see that the sharper the peak is, the narrower that width is, so we're dividing by a smaller number, it makes the resolution go up. So this is a simpler version of resolution because it only relies on looking at one single peak. So that's the number that we get about here. And notice that the number isn't even the same as the, the full width at half max definition. So there is a relationship between the two. You do need to know how you're defining resolution uh, and not just saying the resolution is X. So usually people say resolution brackets full width half maximum. So this is the most common one that you'll encounter. Now there's just one other one that I want to present here. And this one's relevant to ion traps, quadrupole instruments, 
or at least it used to be back when they weren't even that high resolution. So unit mass resolution is a way of just saying that you have two peaks that are one mass unit apart and they seem to be resolved. So they have that 10% overlap. So in other words, it doesn't matter if the peaks are 152, 153, or if they're 1547, 1548. Uh, they're still one mass unit apart from each other and they're resolved. So in this case, you just report that they have unit resolution across the two. So in a qualitative sense, you could say that the spectrum on the top has higher resolution than the spectrum on the bottom. You could also apply that full width at half maximum definition, which is the one that I prefer that you use to quantify numerically what the resolution of the top one is compared to the bottom. And just to give you a sense, this one is calculated about this, and the bottom one has a resolution of about that. So obviously you can see the difference. And the place where resolution really starts to matter actually comes down to reporting the mass. It's not true to say that resolution and accuracy are one and the same, but they do go hand in hand. So on a broader, low resolution instrument, you might be able to report the mass of that compound, maybe with one or two decimal places. But in order to report the mass of a molecule with several dec decimal places, you do need a high resolution picture so you can record accurately what the, what the top of that peak is. So high resolution instruments tend to provide us with higher mass accuracy. And it's that extra mass accuracy that allows us to determine just from the mass alone what our compound might be. Now, how do we use that mass to get this unknown compound? Well, that's a topic for another video, but that's where we're going to be going next week.